what's good guys it is pretty late but i had to give this part four of andrew tate and tucker colson uh for you guys um now i did post a recent update concerning the situation i am currently working full-time as a chemist so the uploads will be less frequent but i'll still be uploading make sure you check out the rest of the content make sure you subscribe let's get it and i don't think there's actually the, the opposing side to the good i don't think function as a thinking populace at all i think they simply repeat yeah it, it feels like there's i mean the conflict between those two groups is getting more intense mm -hmm. it's certainly getting more intense and i it was interesting for me because and i want to be an optimist <laughs> but i lost so much faith in humanity during covid facts i really if you would have told me how covid would have gone down yes before covid i'd say no we're not that bad, you know? Like, I thought, the people aren't that dumb. But when I experienced COVID, it, it's actually scary. You see how the Nazis managed to do what they did. You see mm -hmm. how they managed to put people in concentration camps. You see it. And I had a very unique view of COVID because in the first days of COVID, when people were falling over in China and the Italian hospitals were overrun, at the yeah. height of the panic, when most people believed, because it was the very beginning, early stages, my brother and I had a very logical conversation and said, we're two military aged men in very good physical condition. If we die. I mean, it, it makes sense, right? I and mean, we were all kind of just told, okay, you know, it's COVID, people are dying, stay in your homes, everyone's dead in the home. So it just shows you the power really that, um, that the governments all over the world have. I mean, at the, at the, at the snap of a finger, basically they snap their fingers and the people listen. Die of this, the world's over. If it can kill us, it's zombie apocalypse. So why are we going to live in fear? So we found the only two countries that were open, which were Sweden and Belarus. We had just been to Belarus. This is before the Ukraine war. We'd just been there. We decided to try Sweden. So for the first three months of COVID during the height of lockdowns, when, when Florida was closed, when mm. it was um, absolute. I remember. Yeah, when it was the craziest lockdowns globally. Me and Tristan are in Sweden in absolute freedom. They had no restrictions, no masks, no vaccine passports, Crazy. no social distancing, nightclubs are full, lunch, restaurants are open, perfectly complete normal society. Yeah. Nobody talks about this anymore. Nobody talks about, wait, Sweden never did a thing. Yep. Everything functioned perfectly fine the entire time. And they don't have it. Where's their mass, where's their illness of severe, their winter of severe illness and death? Yes. They never had one. It's a cold country, never had one. So we were- Makes you think- Living in Sweden, living completely normal lives, seeing everyone seeing the internet and seeing this insanity and we're like well surely if we just put up a few videos of us partying in sweden in nightclubs <laughs> this will wake people up no nope. didn't want to people ignored their own eyes that's the scariest thing about everything is that they can get to a level where with the media machine where people will genuinely ignore their own eyes correct but i said in the beginning at the at the, they just snap their fingers and people immediately scurry and 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 just panic i mean the, the of power that is in the hands of a certain few elite people is scary i don't understand how you can get people so brainwashed that they will see that the sky is blue and then they'll watch that the sky is green and they'll, and they'll believe it's look green at it again and go it's green the sky's green mm -hmm. it, it's crazy to me but covid proves they can do that and uh that's why the the war is getting so intense because the principled people are saying how can you still believe in the things that you're saying here is all the logical empirical evidence that that is a lie. Yeah. But these people are ideologically brainwashed and they don't want to take enough. They don't have the bravery it takes to wake up and accept that they're being lied to. So they'd rather just to the end of time, repeat what they're told. I mean, it's almost like people's sense of self identity is crumbling, especially now with social media and everything going on. Scary. And it becomes more and more intense as it becomes more and more ridiculous. That's so scary. As it becomes more and more ridiculous, the more intense both sides get. Yes. Right? So what the future holds, I'm not entirely sure. But I like to believe, even my current charges, I found solace when I was in jail, that the thinking people are looking at this going, something about this doesn't seem right. Well, I mean, it, it is a little bracing. I mean, when I discovered, I mean, I was sympathetic to you <clears> already. <throat> yeah. um, but, you know, a man's accused of human trafficking. It's worth finding out what he's accused of. Yeah. And when I discovered that there was no like, actual human trafficking charge, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not actually human trafficking, I don't care what you call it, yep. you weren't buying it, even accused of buying and selling anyone, then the next conclusion you inevitably reach is 
they don't like the guy, they don't like his views, it's fine. They're gonna send him to jail for that. Yeah. I'm so glad that Tucker is so, you know, open to Andrew's points, you know, point of the story or side of the story, and not just giving everything he reads in the media. I love it. That does seem like an escalation. Absolutely, but if they don't like your views and you're inspiring millions of people to resist slave programming, you become a threat. Like, they disgust me. But you can't send a guy to jail because you disagree with him. You no. shouldn't. But even before I went to jail, the members of parliament in the UK were talking about me and what a dangerous role model I am for young boys. Mm -hmm. So they launched this initiative inside of British schools to ban <laughs> me. My name can't be said inside of any British school. And members of parliament were standing up in parliament saying, Andrew Tate is dangerous. He's encouraging young boys to have misogynistic views because I'm literally telling young men to go to the gym and to stand up for themselves. And oh, yeah. Be believe in themselves. Oh, yeah. So, misogy so misogynistic, yeah. And by extension, you look at some of the sexual education books these children are being given. Wild. Which I believe at an age nine, I don't think a child needs to learn about no. anal sex or any of these things. Probably That's not. Wild. Yeah, probably not. So they're pushing that to the children, but I'm banned. Well, they're also pushing weed and video games on boys. Oh, exactly. completely. And you can listen to rap music about killing people all day long. And there's a whole, and little Nas, he can, he can have sex with the devil in his music videos. That's fine. But I'm dangerous for saying go to the gym. And once I realized what was scary to me is, I, I said this to my brother, I said, once the parliament's discussing you, you're basically considered a national security threat at this point. Right, guys. So I'm going to stop it there. It is pretty. <laughs> It's pretty late, but I had to uh, continue a little bit of this interview. But let let me know, do you think the views of Andrew Tate are truly detrimental to teens? Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. I will finish this whole interview. I promise you that I'll see you in the next one.